The Cove. Most people have never and will never be affected by the pain that this documentary brings to me. The Cove was released in the summer of 2009 and highlights the killing of cetaceans in Taiji, Japan. Taiji is located on Honshu, the main island of Japan. It is about 600 kilometers southwest of Tokyo. The Cove follows the journey of Rick O'Berry, who trained the five dolphins who played Flipper in the television series, as he travels to Japan to capture footage and protest the killing of cetaceans in a secluded bay. Japan is part of the IWC, or International Whaling Commission. This is the only cetacean protective group recognized by the United Nations. It is meant to protect cetaceans, but dolphins and porpoises are not protected under this act. This leaves them wide open for the attack and diminishing of their species. The IWC allows countries to take and kill large cetaceans for scientific purposes, and Japan takes advantage of this. Japan hunts and kills many whales and large cetaceans for scientific purposes in the Antarctic waters each year. These whales, which are used for so-called scientific purposes, are usually brought back to Japan and sold as food. When Rick O'Berry started working with dolphins in the 1960s at the Miami Sea Aquarium, he was very happy with his life, until one day when one of the dolphins, in his words, committed suicide. Rick said that Kathy swam up to him, closed her blowhole, and submerged herself in the water. Since every breath dolphins take is voluntary, and he says she took her own life. This incident is what fueled Rick's drive to free captive dolphins and to keep wild dolphins safe. The day after Kathy died, Rick was arrested in Bohemi for trying to free a captive dolphin. He has spent the last 35 years of his life trying to tear down the industry that he created. He himself said, if a dolphin anywhere in the world is in trouble, my phone rings, and he started with this cove in Taiji. When dolphins are kept in captivity, they very rarely stay healthy. Most dolphins develop ulcers and on various medications to control stress and blood pressure. Dolphins are forced to train for many hours a day to learn routines and tricks which only uses to impress us. As Rick O'Berry says, a dolphin's smile is its greatest deception. It creates the illusion that they are always happy. Dolphins' intelligence has been proven by scientists. Dolphins are self-aware beings. This means that when they look in a mirror, they know what they are looking at and can distinguish themselves from other dolphins of the same species. Dolphins are also able to learn and remember tricks and signals that we teach them as a result of being in captivity. But anyway, back to the cove. Every year in Taiji, dolphins are driven into a tiny secluded inlet. The most beautiful of the dolphins are picked by trainers to spend the rest of their lives in captivity around the world. The remaining dolphins are brutally slaughtered. Killing dolphins in this way also takes place, or has been done, in the Solomon and Faroe Islands, Peru, Taiwan, and Hawaii. Within minutes of the slaughtering beginning, the cove turns red. You can hear the dolphins cry out to each other as many go silent or begin to panic. The dolphins are not humanely killed. Many have their throats cut or are simply stabbed until they are no longer alive. This inlet is blocked with nets to keep the dolphins from escaping during this time when they become frantic. The dolphins that are slaughtered do not go to waste, though. The meat is cut up and sold in local grocery stores and given to the school system to serve to the children for lunch. Dolphin meat is not good for human consumption, though. It contains toxic levels of mercury, along with other toxic chemicals, such as cadmium, the pesticide DDT, and organic contaminants, such as PCBs. In 2010, over 1,100 people living in Taiji were tested for mercury levels. The men in Taiji had 11 parts per million, and the women had 6.63 parts per million of methylmercury in their systems. This is well over the national average. This amount of mercury causes mercury poisoning, which can sometimes be fatal and disfiguring. In the cove, Rick goes to Tokyo and Osaka to talk to Japanese people about eating dolphins and whales, since the fishermen's reasons for doing this is because it is part of their culture. It is surprising how many people in the cities have no idea what is going on. Many are shocked at the idea of eating dolphins and other cetaceans, and even more dismayed to find out it is going on in their own country. During the filming of The Cove, many of the shots were done with undercover cameras. The cameras that were hidden on land were disguised as rocks. These cameras were built especially for this project to blend in with the surrounding area. These cameras were put in place by the team during nighttime undercover trips to The Cove. This means that some of the shots in the movie are filmed with infrared or night vision cameras. These shots had to be filmed with night vision cameras because the cove is closely guarded and there are many signs telling people to get out or stay away. The crew scoped out the cove beforehand and had a good idea of where they wanted the cameras to go and when there would be guards on duty or not, even though the entire crew was on edge during the time it took to set up the equipment. 
Once all the equipment was in place, the team went back to the hotel and listened to the sounds the camera and hydrophones were picking up. They were all silent as they listened, because they knew in the morning all the dolphins they were hearing now would be dead. You could see the terror and sadness in Rick O'Brien's face as he listened to the sound of the dolphins communicating with each other for the last time. After the slaughter was well over, the team went back and collected all the equipment. They used the footage they had recorded to make a short video in which they played on a small TV monitor mounted on a harness. Rick O'Brien walked into an IWC meeting with this harness on, showing the people what they had been fooled into believing about what the Japanese were actually doing in Taiji. Because of this documentary, the spotlight has been put on Japan to change or stop the slaughtering of dolphins. In the dolphin hunts of late 2009, the dolphins that were not sold in dolphinariums were set free instead of being slaughtered. This is a big step to take when you consider that the documentary was released just earlier that year, and the dolphin is a main food source for them. In the 35 years that Rick has been trying to stop the slaughter and harming of dolphins, he has set up an organization called Save Japan Dolphins. This organization raises money to help stop the slaughtering that goes on in Taiji. They sell various items from hats to bracelets to sweaters, along with supplying people with updates on what is going on in Japan and how they can help. In the long run, stopping the slaughter of cetaceans is possible, but just requires a little effort from the public. The biggest danger to cetaceans right now is humans, but we are also the only ones who can help them survive. There is always something you can do to help the other creatures of this planet, maybe donating money or just supporting the causes you see fit. Thank you for listening.